if you didn't know, uh, GameStop got their PlayStation 4 demo kits in, which means you can play a PlayStation 4 right now if you go to GameStop. Most of them should have it set up, so, uh, you know, do it. Uh, I did it, and that's what this video is about. I'm going to tell my opinion of the PlayStation 4 demo that GameStop had available as compared to the one that Microsoft had available. Also, when I went to GameStop, they did have Xbox One set up, so if you do want to play an Xbox One, they have them at GameStop as well. Uh, it wasn't set up completely yet, though. There were no controllers in the stand yet for the uh, Xbox One uh, demo, you know, giant statue thing that has, like, Xbox One written on it and stuff like that. So uh, if you want to play uh, Xbox One or PlayStation 4, go to your local GameStop, and they should have one at least set up. So anyway, on to, uh, I guess, the PlayStation 4. I did play three games, the games being Octodad, Deadliest Catch, which is fucking hilarious. It's like you control a ragdoll octopus who pretends to be a man, and no one knows he's an octopus, and the more octopusy things you do, the more attention you draw yourself. So it was pretty fun. Uh, I'll get all, to all the games later, but besides Octodad, I played Knack, and I played Contra Blast. Uh, everyone knows what Knack is. Contra Blast is a game where you play a girl's imaginary gymnastic um, friend where you can turn into a shadow and you kind of warp into a wall and you use shadows to traverse terrain that you can pop out of the shadows and become a person again. It's a, it's a really weird and fun to play game concept. It's a little confusing though because you don't really think to take shadows into, you know, I don't know, you don't tend to think of shadows as things you can walk on in games. It's always just been like, oh look at that nice shadow detail and stuff like that. So you don't really take that into account. But anyway, I'm gonna talk about the console and the controller and the dashboard first. Uh, I held the controller. It's not grippy at all in a sense where there's no rubber on the actual controller besides the thumbsticks. Uh, the controller itself is this weird plastic that has like dots jabbed into it. I can't really describe it. It's like, if you imagine like a piece of plastic with grids of dots, you know, pushed into it. And it makes it very grippy, but not in the rubbery sense. It has, uh, you can hold it very well, it's not slippery, so the, the little dots do add a texture to it that helps you hold it very well, which I did like. I do like the PlayStation 4's thumbsticks better than the Xbox One's thumbsticks, not for control, the Xbox One's feel more precise, but the PS4 ones are way grippier, they're not as slippery feeling as the Xbox One's are. They made it some really, really grippy black rubber, and it feels very nice to hold, it doesn't, you know... You know, fingers don't slip off, they're not like domes anymore, they're kind of like the Xbox Ones where it's a concave shape with a, a bowl in the middle. Uh, the buttons themselves don't feel as good as the Xbox Ones buttons, they feel kind of cheap. Uh, the Xbox Ones buttons are some clear plastic or acrylic and they're domed and they're essentially made like this thick. But the PlayStation 4 ones feel, when you touch them, almost empty or hollow. So what I assume it is, is a... Uh, if you take this lens cap, for instance, this is the PlayStation 4 button. You'll see, like, this is one of the, uh, you know, the X square triangle circle buttons. So let's say this is the X button. If it's like this, imagine a tube of plastic coming down from here, maybe this much, and then the inside being completely hollow, but it has a rim of plastic around it. That's what all the PlayStation 4 buttons feel like. The actual buttons, not the, uh, the triggers or anything like that. The buttons feel as though they're just a hollow cap over the, the I guess, the depression sensor. Uh, so I don't like the buttons because they feel too easy to push and they feel very light to touch. They don't have a firm button push and that's what I didn't like about it. Uh, the bumpers feel fine. Uh, they're a little clicky, but you know, uh, I enjoy it. And the triggers themselves aren't as good as the Xbox One's triggers in the soft, you know, depression pull, trigger pull kind of thing. They don't feel as soft as when you pull them, but they are nice. They have like a firm, you know, you could you could feel it when you pull the trigger. It doesn't feel like super soft or anything like that. Uh, they are concave out. They're not like uh, ramped up on the sides like the Xbox One's controller is. So the PlayStation 4 controller, the triggers themselves feel good. They feel more comparable to like an Xbox 360 controller, except they're a lot broader. They have a grip texture on them and they're not as clicky when you pull the trigger. They feel nice, there's no problems with them in that aspect. Uh, I did fiddle with that weird uh, touchpad thing, like the touchpad that's on the top of the controller uh, in between the share and options button, I believe. Uh, it feels weird. Uh, it's not like a flat surface in a sense where like if you touch it, it actually like moves, like it f pushes in. Uh, it's not soft, it's like a hard piece of plastic that when you push will tilt one of two sides. So. Uh, if you see it and play with it, it's literally just two buttons essentially and then a touch sensor bar that goes over them that you can then rock in one of two directions 
to push the two buttons. That's what that feels like. Uh, I didn't mind it. Uh, it didn't get in the way. I didn't even touch it when I was, wasn't playing with a thing that used that feature. Uh, the share button and the options button or start button, I don't remember what the other one was. Uh, they feel fine. They feel fine. Ooh, they felt fine. Uh, but they didn't feel uh, cheesy or anything like that. The only thing I didn't really like about the PlayStation uh, 4 controller was the, the face buttons. They felt a little cheap. That's the only thing. And they didn't look like they had the best decals printed on them. On to Knack. Uh, it's a fun game to play. The PlayStation 4 demos did not look as good as the Xbox One's games did. But that, I assume, is because the PlayStation 4 games are just that. They're demos. Uh, the Xbox One that I played had full versions of both Killer Instinct and Forza. Now, if you know anything about Forza, it's a very, very good looking game. Even though Knack, I was playing the playable demo for it, it didn't look the best it could. I assume the version that comes out with uh, the PlayStation 4 at launch will look better than the game I played or the demo itself. But I have to say the Xbox One that I played looked better than the PlayStation 4. Which is weird because the PlayStation 4 technically has better hardware in it because it has GDDR5 RAM instead of GDDR3 and it has, I think, like a faster processor. I mean, there's very minute differences that technically give Sony the edge in the, uh, I guess, the technical aspect of it, but for some reason, the Xbox games looked a lot better than the PlayStation 4 games did. Uh, so as I was talking about Knack, you can actually do things that I thought you wouldn't. I thought it would just be like, you know, you're a big monster and you hack and slash. Essentially, the way Knack works is you're this little guy and you break what are called relics and then you gain pieces and it makes you larger. The more pieces you gain, the larger your health bar becomes and the stronger you are. So you can get bigger and eventually become stronger, you can take more hits, but the more you get hit, the smaller you become. So it's a weird trade-off between power and health, which I kind of like, but it makes it more difficult the more you get hit. So besides that, there's also, you turn into um, Stealth Knack, where you press the triangle button, you drop all the pieces around you and you become this invisible clear guy. You have to walk through lasers, hit switches, and then you can turn to your big self and fight the enemies. I thought the stealth knack was a pretty cool idea. I like the ability to switch between types of knack, if that's the name, or that's the proper way to refer to it. There was also a ice knack, where you played as regular knack, if that's the person's name. If it's not, I'm sorry. I assume it is, seeing as it's called knack. Um, you walk around and it's an ice place, and you break icicles and you gain the shards of ice as armor. The trade-off with this is that you get strength, but you don't get health. It's essentially a glass cannon, where if you get hit once, you lose essentially all your shields and you go back to the small knack. But the trade-off is you get a lot of strength from it as well, but you minus your, uh, your shields. So I like that concept where they're actually playing with what you can do as a knack. You're not just big guy, get bigger, slice things, and then get small when you need to. It actually has like implications of depending on the location you play in and the environment around you. Uh, I played Contra Blast. It's a fun game to play. I really don't have much to say about it because it is a very difficult game to, to like grasp a hold of. Because, you know, when you're platforming at first, you see uh, essentially shadows on the wall. And you have to learn to, you know, jump into the shadows, climb them, and use the motion of shadows as essentially a platformer, where it's essentially a 3D game that turns into a 2D platformer once you get near a wall with a shadow. I thought that was a cool aspect and I really enjoyed playing it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to get a PlayStation 4, but if I did, I'd probably get Contra Blast. I don't know if it's for Xbox One, but I would re like to play Contra Blast at some point. The last game I played after Contra Blast was Octodad, Deadliest Catch, and it's a really, really fun game to play. Uh, the way it works is you control the movement of the arms with thumbsticks, and then you can grab things, pick them up. One thumbstick controls the arms moving up and down, one controls the movement around. So it's a really weird concept, and then you press the left uh, bumper, and then you switch to your legs, where one thumbstick controls one leg, and then the other controls the other leg, obviously. And it's a really fun game to play, because you have to, you know, maneuver, and it's, it's a difficult, but in a fun way, where wacky stuff will happen as a result of being hard to control. So you have to, you know, maintain the fact that you're not an octopus, otherwise people will learn you're an octopus and then you can't get married, which is the demo, by the way, you, uh, it's your marriage, which I assume is a precursor to the actual game where you are a married man with kids. Uh, octopus. Uh, so it was really fun to play. Uh, the demo had you run through, a, uh, I guess, like a, a sandbox kind of chapel where you'd go around, find pieces for your outfit, put it on. After you found the pieces, you could then go through the door and then you'd be in your chapel getting ready to marry your wife, and as you walk down the aisle, there's things that break, there's banana peels that you slip on, and the more you break and the more you fumble, the more people become suspicious of you. So 
So that's the way the game works, essentially, I assume, is that you have to pretend not to be an octopus and do things that don't raise suspicion of the people around you to be like, maybe he's an octopus, because that's everyone's logical assumption when a person trips and falls. So that's it. I really didn't get to see the actual home guide, but it did take time to load the demo guide screen. So I don't know if that's uh, an implication of being slow. Like, it would take a good like 40, 50 seconds of a loading screen to pass before you get back to the screen with all the demos to choose from. So uh, that's my opinion on the PlayStation 4 controller, the PlayStation 4 itself, and the games.